Got those eggs for me? Right here. Good for you. Anything I can do for you now? Do you think I could get a canteen of water from you? Got one right here. You're good to go. Well, I'd better get going. Come back soon. There, just call me Nancy Paul Bunyan Drew. Bank robbers? Wonder who wrote this? So far, so good. That should do it. Something goes here. So far, so good. That should do it. There, one extremely well-built campfire, if I do say so myself. Great looking fire, Nancy. Nice job. Need something? May I go writing now? Yep, if you got everything I told you you need, and you think you know your stuff when it comes to horses, old Bob's all yours. Talk to you later. Yahoo. Hmm. Hmm. Come on, Bob. <laughs> I'm ready. Ready for some questions? I think so. Where's the horse's hocks? On its back legs. That's one out of ten. Ask me something else. Where's the horse's frog? 
on the bottom of its hoof. Two out of ten. Got a long way to go. Ask me something else. How tall is a horse that's 15 hands? Five feet. Three down, seven to go. Ask me something else. What kind of a horse is a Paso Fino? A gated horse. That's four right. Ask me something else. How can you tell if a horse is colicking? It keeps lying down, then standing up. That's five. You're halfway there. Ask me something else. What's the difference between a bay and a chestnut? A bay has black points. Bingo. That was number six. Ask me something else. What tribe bred the first Appaloosas? The Nez Pierce. Seven down. You're in the home stretch. Ask me something else. What part of a horse is most likely to be hurt when it founders? Its feet. Eight right. Just two to go. Ask me something else. What part of the saddle should you always check before you head out on the trail? The cinch. This here's your final question. I'm ready. What is a mule? The offspring of a female horse and a male donkey. Well, you answered all the questions right. And I can tell by the way you sit, you ain't gonna go falling off for no good reason. So you're free to ride outside the corral. Just don't go galloping all over the place. Because if you bring old Bob back all hot and sweaty, you can kiss your cowgirl days at Shadow Ranch goodbye. Okay, Bob. What do you say we do some sightseeing? That trunk looks really old. Tuning forks. Cool.
an old token or something. What a beautiful horse. Hi, can I help you? Hi, are you Mary Yazzie? That's me. I didn't hear a car. Did you hike in or come by horse? I rode here. I'm Nancy Drew. So where are you staying? Shadow Ranch. I heard what happened last night. Tough break for the Raleigh's. Getting that place going has been a real struggle for them. How did you hear about it? Word gets around. Here, I have something for you. Bet wanted me to give you this. Great. I want to buy a small piece of property from them. It must be their response. Bad news? They rejected my offer. Well, I guess that's that. But as long as you're here, look around. All the jewelry you see, all the rugs, the beadwork, the pottery, they were all made by local artists, including yours truly. So if you want to know something, especially if you want to know how much something is, just ask. Is that you riding that beautiful Palomino in the picture over there? That's my horse, Banner. I train him myself. What else can he do? Anything I ask. He and I are both pretty talented. Is that old trunk over there the one you bought from the Raleigh's? Yeah, they didn't want much for it, so I took it off their hands. Problem is, I still don't know what's in it because I can't figure out how to open it. Have you asked the Raleigh's about it? They were no help, although they did offer to buy it back from me. I just told them to keep looking for a way to get it open. Are there many petroglyphs around here? If you take the trail to Cougar Bend, there are hundreds. A lot of them were probably made by the Anasazi. They lived in the area until about 700 years ago, when they just suddenly picked up and left. I won something that looks like a token when I played that game over there. What is it? They actually used those for something back in the 1880s, but I don't know what. It was great talking to you. Catch you later. Would you mind if I tried to get this open? Please do. In fact, if you get it open, I'll let you keep something from it. You can have your pick. Charlene of Purcell's office. Hi, my name is Nancy Drew. May I please speak to Miss Purcell? Concerning? I'm staying at a ranch in central Arizona, and since she knows so much about the history of Arizona, I thought maybe she could answer some questions for me. Questions concerning? Well, I came across a very old trunk that might contain stuff that has to do with these people named Dirk Valentine and Francis Humber. Only I can't open it. Did you say Dirk Valentine? And his girlfriend, Francis Humber, yes. Huh. What would you hold, please? Thank you for holding, and thank you for calling the office of Charlena Purcell. Miss Purcell's latest novels, like Wind Through My Heart, was an instant bestseller. And like so many of her novels, it recently received the Catherine Coop Award for Historical Excellence. Reading a Charlena Purcell novel is like traveling through time to the Old Southwest on the wings of love. This is Charlena. Who is this again? Uh, Nancy Drew. Tell me about the trunk you found. Well... It has a very weird three-hold locking mechanism on it. That does sound like it came from the Humber family. Is there any kind of picture on it? Yes, as a matter of fact, there's this kind of abstract design made up of hearts and doves and the initials E-H and A-H. E-H would be Eldridge Humber and A-H would be Abigail Humber, Francis Humber's grandparents. The picture no doubt commemorates their wedding day, which was April 9th, 1811. How will knowing that help me open the trunk? You got me. In the course of my research, I've only read about the trunks Merrill and Eldridge Humber handcrafted. I've never actually opened one. However, I've been running across fascinating tidbits concerning the Humber family and stashing them away for years. When I have enough tidbits stashed away, I may well write a book about them. 
then you'd probably be very interested to know what's in this trunk. Yes, I would. And since I've helped you, or tried to, it's only fair that you help me, don't you think? Sure, I'll keep you posted. Did I mention that I'm staying at Shadow Ranch? This just gets better and better. I'll tell my assistant to put your calls through immediately. By the way, why are you so interested in the Humbers? Knowing more about them and what happened in the past may help me figure out something that's going on in the present. I'm kind of a detective. That makes two of us. I'll be waiting to hear from you. I got the trunk open! Great, thank you. Go ahead and take something from it. You deserve a reward. Tex would have a cow if I rode bareback. Uh-oh. I'd better put that back. Oh my gosh! Jane Nash is Tex's sister! You still here? You sound surprised. You and your friends, if they ever show up, you ain't gonna last more than three days out here. They well, I hope you like surprises, Tex, because you're in for one. City folk can't take living out here. Too rugged, too much work, too dangerous. I understand you have a sister named Jane Nash. So what if I do? Did you know that she used to work for the Raleigh's? No, she didn't. What gave you that idea? Hey, you've been snooping, haven't you? In the Raleigh's stuff? In my stuff? I'm just very observant, that's all. My business ain't none of your business. And that includes any sisters I may or may not have. You need to go. I'm busy. Hello, Nancy. Something I can do for you? How long have you worked here? About as long as the Raleigh's have lived here. About three months, I guess. I was their first hire. First me, then Tex, then Shorty. Tex seems a little ornery. He does his job, and he does it good. Far as I'm concerned, that's all that's important. I'll let you get back to work. Ma'am? Miss Nancy, how may I be of service? Have you ever met Mary Yazzie? Course. Nice lady. I mean, for the most part. Gets real unfriendly when the subject of the Rowleys comes up. Do you know anything about the piece of property she's been trying to buy from the Rowleys? Well, I know she says she wants to buy it because she feels spiritually drawn to it. But I think she's got something up her sleeve. Oh, Nancy, it's great having you here. I mean, I like to talk, you know? I like to converse, to debate, to discuss. You like to gossip, don't you? More than anything. 
which isn't a bad thing. People like you and I are fascinated by the human condition, that's all. So, who else do you want to talk about? Uh, nobody really. Well, I'd better get going. Pleasure talking to you. I wonder how you open this. I wonder how you open this. This doesn't look like it was ever opened. As usual, things did not work out like I planned. Just when I get everything fixed just right for you to go looking for the thing I hid for you, I go and get myself arrested. But no matter what you hear, nothing is gonna happen to me. I will be fine and we will be together soon, I promise. Meanwhile, you can keep busy by looking for what I hid. Start by using this piece of paper to mark where all the rock pictures are. They will tell you what to do next. Your favorite flowers and the flowers on your favorites, start keeping them in mind too. I will leave a message for you in this here cell, just in case they decide to move me to the jail down in Tumbleweed or something. I like vexing your brain, because when you are thinking real hard, like when you're playing the piano, you are more beautiful than anything in the world. I am sure to be out of here before you find my treasure, but in case I am not, know that it is all yours and that you are more precious to me than 10,000 treasures put together. 9, 12, 15, 22, 5, 25, 15, 21. Dirk. P.S. I do not and never will hold what your father did to me against you. July 4th, 1882. Got swore in as sheriff. It was the 4th, so it's like all them celebrations was for me, which of course they weren't. Francis thought up a song and played it on the piano for me. I forget how it went, but it was pretty. I'm lucky to have her for a daughter. Herford Shoup come by with a plant he brung from New York, which he calls Harrison's Yellow. Looked right dead to me, but Francis planted it out back and give it some water and already it looks to be on the mend. She's 17 and can read and write good and knows her numbers. Herford's thinking to marry her, but I said she ain't of that mind yet. August 2nd, 1880. September 13th, 1883. Dirk sent a secret letter to Francis, which Mason got hold of and gave to me. I locked it up so she won't ever read it. Francis ain't allowed to see Dirk in jail, of course. And if she never sees his letter, maybe she will think he don't like her no more, and, and maybe she will stop liking him. Francis's ma would have known what to do better than me. I wish she was still alive. September 17th, 1883. They hung Dirk at noon. I thought I would be glad. But I ain't. September 18th, 1883. 
Francis took Brownie in my big saddle bag and is gone. She ain't told no one where she's going, not even Cappy. But I know she will forget, Dirk, and when she does, she will come home because she's a smart gal and, and will figure out that I, I did what I'd done for her. January 4th, 1884. My sister says her little girl Ellie got a letter that said Francis went east and was not of a mind to ever return. I hope this ain't the truth, because I miss her something awful. I ain't seen or heard from Francis in a year. I tell people she's on her way home, but when I look in my heart, I know this is a lie. Bingo! F.H. Francis Humber? Green bottle under... Hmm, wonder what that means. <laughs> 